first of all, Haley, I just want to say I loved this movie. I am a huge horror fan, and this one really got under my skin. I just thought it was so relevant. And uh, more than anything, it felt so real. I legitimately felt like I was eavesdropping in on an actual Zoom meeting, and everything that happened was real. Um, How was the experience like for you? I understand that these were your friends in real life, correct? Yes, yeah. We've all known each other for, I think... Probably about five, five years now. At least most of us have known each other about five years because we all did a short film called Dawn of the Death with Caroline Redina and I were all cast by Rob in that film. Um, and so that's how we met him initially. Okay. And I also understand there was a really interesting short film on Twitter that led eventually to this getting made. Um, would you care to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So it wasn't, it was I feel like short film is being generous because it was a prank prank video then. <laughs> Although I'll take short film, it makes it sound way more professional. Um, <laughs> Rob, so we have a, a group of us that just when quarantine started, started a uh, WhatsApp group called the Quarantine Movie Club where we would watch movies together on Netflix party probably a lot of times almost every night. Um, and so everyone that's pretty much involved in the film is from that group. We're just filmmakers mm-hmm. out of work, you know, everybody was. Sure. And Rob, being the horror, you know, guru that he is, he one day, he was living by himself, um, and he told us on a big Zoom chat that he was hearing noises in his attic. And so we, you know, being bored, we're like, oh, let's all go in there together, and maybe there's a man that's, like, secretly been living in your attic this whole time. And mm-hmm. so he led us into his attic, and then while he's, you know, showing us the attic, they had cut footage from Wreck in of a, like, zombie kid jumping out of the screen and so he was able to sneakily um, slip his phone into some contraption where he's moved smoothly from the uh, computer footage into this pre-recorded phone footage and we also then get to see the zombie and scream and and he <laughs> that he was dead and so he took the footage from that and cut it all together so it was like one seamless call and Mm -hmm. put it online and it got picked up by Lad Bible and a couple other publications in like a day or two. It had like 7 million views. And so it went a little viral. And so that was kind of where all this started is he then was approached by Shudder and a couple other production companies that were interested to see if he had a longer version of this available. And of course he said, yes, as you do. And then him and Jed, um, our co-writer, Jed Shepard, came up with Zoom seance. And that's kind of where it all took off after that. Nice. Now, I understand that you had to do your own special effects and lighting. And I mean, did you just have to have a crash course in that? Did he help you out? A, li- a little bit. Um, I, I'm a, I've am been a filmmaker for a few years. So I luckily oh, nice. had a little bit, like a little bit of knowledge when it comes mm-hmm. to uh, the lighting and the camera stuff. My partner is a cinematographer, so I was a mm-hmm. one step ahead as well, basically using his knowledge to help myself. Um, but we, so we had to set up everything ourselves. We had to be our own crew. Um, we had to be sent, Douglas Cox, our amazing producer, was like sending us Amazon packages with, okay, mm-hmm. you have an um, iPhone that you would Velcro to the back of our computers. And then we had you know, sound equipment attached to our computers and Callum, our sound guy was like giving us instructions over the phone of how to set this up and we're having to test everything together. And then we would take Rob on little tours of our house so that he could kind of pick out what was scary about our apartment. So it was, you know, (laughs) nice when you find out like, oh, your apartment's really creepy. We can use the whole thing. It's like, great, Rob, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Have you been more nervous in your own apartment since the film or no? I mean, I want to say no, but then I, you know, now I've been asked that a few times and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I do turn the lights on more often than not now. So I, I, I would say, <laughs> I have to say yes. I have to say, no, you know what? I, I don't walk around in a dark apartment like I used to. Problem free. I know. As I was watching the film, I'm like, Haley, honey, please turn your lights on. I'm scared for you. <laughs> no, what are you doing? Just turn the light on. But then, you know, the lights do you know, we like to think the power went out and so mm-hmm. it just wasn't a complete fool, but, but yeah, walking around the dark was, I was just asking for it, wasn't I? It was very effective. I was very scared for you. Yeah. Good, and I'm not good. easily scared when I was watching this movie like this. Oh, perfect. That's what we want. Yeah. 
And honestly, this is the first time I've been on Zoom since uh, watching the film. And the fact that I'm talking to you, I'm expecting like something terrifying to happen, like right behind me, even though it's uh, the middle of the day here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're lucky I'm not, I'm, I'm out of town right now. So I'm not actually at my apartment. Otherwise, I might I be like, really scared. Yeah, <laughs> it, might, it might be too much, but it is. It has seemed to be a common, uh, no one wants to come on Zoom anymore because we've ruined it for them. So sorry about that. No, no, it's very effective. I, you know, I, I like being scared. Otherwise, I wouldn't watch such films. Good, good. But um, also, speaking of being scared, you guys all seemed genuinely terrified. I mean, I know you're all professional actors, but I have to ask, were there any scares or anything that you did not see coming? Oh, definitely. There were tons of stuff we didn't see coming um okay. rob did something very clever where everything we shot first was all over the death scenes and the stunts we needed and <laughs> what, yes so i mean he is brilliant um so what we would do is while we were filming he had you know we had pre-shot all the stunts and the death scenes and we didn't know in the script um the <laughs> script we were giving was more of a treatment and it had everything redacted as far as any scares or deaths so Oh us as actors we didn't know anyone else's deaths other than our own and if we were alive to witness the deaths in in the film mm -hmm. so what rob would do is he would pre-cut the like a mini version of someone's death scene and then play it for us as we were filming so that we could react to it in real time instead of you know having to imagine okay this is caroline this is how she's gonna die he just went okay now just watch the screen and react and so you know, there's Gemma and I watching the screen and Emma and then all of a sudden Caroline's face comes flying at us and mm. as, I don't know how spoily I can get but it is awful to watch that and so you, the probably a lot of the initial reactions are the ones that made the cut are us yeah. seeing our friends die on screen for the first time so it was and like I can't watch the Caroline stuff and even um, yeah. I had to do uh, ADR for the end bits and add in some screams and some sounds and things. Mm -hmm. And Rob didn't tell me about the demon in the end. So as I'm, you know, adding in the um, the sound afterwards, watching the video of myself walking down the hallway and it's okay, oh. the light flashing the light. And then, and then you see the demon and I fully <laughs> screamed because I me too. I'm not <laughs> scared. Yeah, exactly. So that screaming here is me really screaming. Um, in real life. So yeah, he did. He, just, he creeped us out a lot throughout it. Yeah, I, I could tell. He sounds like a great friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think after this, I'm not so sure. No, he's <laughs> also, how scripted was it? Did he give you guys a script or just an idea of, all right, this is the situation. And since you guys are friends in real life, you could just bounce off, you know, a very realistic conversation. It was, um, so what we had was our, our three writers, so Rob Savage, Gemma Hurley, and Jed Shepard, they, mm -hmm. they all kind of created a, what we call a scriptment, because it was mm -hmm. part script, but part treatment. So we didn't actually have, so all the dialogue was improv by us. Right. So we had kind of emotional points we needed to meet throughout the script and Rob, um, and they added in a, a fear, sca uh, fear, fear scale, excuse me, that we knew where our character kind of was throughout. So if you know, you, if you, me as a real life person was getting freaked out, seeing my friends die and Rob's like, no, 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 you're the one that's into this. You can, yeah. you're only at a two on the fear scale. You're ready to push it. I'm like, oh, okay, bring it down, bring it down. Um, so we would, yeah, so we would do scenes like, you know, we'd work on that section of a scene and we would know, okay, well, Gemma and Haley are at this point. And then by the end of the scene, they need to be at each other's throat. And then it was just our job as actors to figure out the dialogue and the ways we would get there um, right. to get to the end. So we had, it was a mix of both. We got to play a lot, which was really nice. Yeah, that makes sense. It didn't seem like you guys had memorized lines, but like you said, there were writers that, you know, had to lead you in a certain direction. Yes, exactly. And they and they did a wonderful job of kind of even figuring out um, like the characters and, and how their journeys were going to work into the piece as a whole. Um, there mm -hmm. wasn't even, I mean, really, there wasn't time to memorize lines because we it was from conception to initial shoot day. It was like maybe two weeks until we got there and then figuring out all of the technical stuff. So I'm, I'm very glad it was improv and we got to just have fun with it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, any plans for the future? Um, any, you think you're going to be working with Rob with, you know, more projects, anything coming up? 
Oh, I will. If he calls, I will always pick up his phone. I, he, Hi. I love working with Rob. He's one of my favorite directors I've ever worked with. He's, he's, you know, he's got a really strong vision. You can kind of always trust that what he's asking for is going to turn out exceptionally well. I've done, I think three films with him now. Um, and they're all, they've all been brilliant and, and I'm very proud of all of them. And yeah, I'm hoping I'm like, I've heard rumors, mostly from fans, that they want to host too. And you know, I'm like, well, my character didn't technically die at the end, or you never saw her die, so maybe she comes back in yeah. some form. So I'm, I've been kind of poking at Jed and Rob to make a host too, and be mm -hmm. following Gemma and my character around, just like fighting demons, like Van uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but Haley the Demon Slayer is my. I would definitely watch it. I'm just Thank saying, you. Rob, if you know, <laughs> from, I will from let the fan. You would like it. <laughs> yeah. So did your personal quarantine experience or lockdown experience help with, you know, the, the movie, I assume? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, we had been in quarantine here in London since March, end of March. Mm -hmm. And so we had you know, we hadn't seen friends for ages. We'd been doing mm -hmm. everything over Zoom. We were feeling that desire to like um, connect with people. And we'd been doing like Zoom pub quizzes and yeah. and Zoom birthday parties and like all these things that and uh, that it just seamlessly kind of felt easy to be in front of Zoom. It made mm -hmm. you know I think it helped with the filming medium and it being such a natural thing we'd gotten used to. And then the desire to like you know miss your friends and then not be able to save our friends in that situation when we you know we in real life I was just really missing my friends and these are my friends that I'm actually messing around and playing with and making a movie with so absolutely it was helpful. Okay, so uh, how was uh, the craft service table and the the, the makeup lady for <laughs> um, for this film? I mean I'm the makeup artist was myself, so I'll let everyone else be the judge of that, but it was mainly just putting on a bit of lotion, making sure there wasn't any, like, spots or, you know, any mm -hmm. had any continuity issues, and then that was ready to go, and then catering was my, my boyfriend, so he, uh, he got in charge of making sure that I was well fed throughout the shoot, and, and actually taking walks, and, like, between sobbing, going outside, and getting some fresh air, <laughs> In our, so it was, it was different. It was a very different experience um, shooting a film this way, but but it, it worked really well for you know that we worked with the circumstances that we had, and I think it, it played out very well. Oh, absolutely, um, like I said, a brilliant move on everyone's part. It was a great film. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, it was a it was a pleasure, yeah, and um, I wish you the best of luck and. Hope to see more from you in the future, from you and Rob. Me too. I hope this is the first of many interviews with you, Lori. This was great. It was great.